balls. I put it in nocturnal romance by accident. Well, you know, if if uh, CFT really needs to learn how to do PI, they can come <laughs> learn. Since I put it in there, I might as well put it in uh, to CFC channel as well. Okay, the chat seems to be set up. We have, looks like about a one minute delay on the video, which, let me see if I can make that go away. It is a bestower, which is a, an Amar uh, industrial. Okay, and it looks like the delay is about as far down as I can get it. So, I have this set up so that I can see the stream on my TV. So I'll just make sure to go nice and slow and um, wait for the screen to catch up. Hello. Hello. Ah, yeah, Twitch. All right. Hello. Hello. Yeah, for most of you, it might actually be easier to mute Mumble until the end when I'm taking questions uh, because there is a delay between uh, the Twitch and live. It seems to be about 30 seconds. Uh, Asher Sikander, uh, can you uh, post the uh, uh, Twitch address in uh, Mumble chat, please? Absolutely. Looks like someone beat me to it. Thank you. Thank you. And Sikander, just so you know, I am local recording as well. So if I can figure out how to do it, I can get the recording up on the better quality when this is all done. Oh, cool. Good for you. I'm look I'm really looking forward to this, Asher. 
Why because I'm completely this... incompetent. That fills me with dread. Yes. I have won. I have, I have accomplished my mission. Okay, uh, let's see. Okay, I'm going to wait about one more minute for people to trickle in, and then we'll get started. Welcome, Sophia. Okay, so this is Planetary Interactions 101 uh, for EVE University. I am Asher Dagen. Uh, for the purposes of this lecture, I will be on my alt Kit Kun Soto, uh, who is one of my many PI alts. Um, first, a disclaimer this is a 101 class. If you are looking for all of the crazy things you can do with PI, uh, this is probably not going to be at your level. This is how to pick a planet, how to set up a planet, how to get your stuff off a planet, and what to do with it from there. Uh, there's a lot of advanced features that I am not going to get into today, and if people want more of the advanced features, uh, please bug Galentros to do a PI202 class, because he goes much more into depth than I do. So, Planetary Interactions is probably the most boring way you will ever make a bunch of ESC in EVE. Uh, it's, you know, it's not super exciting, you're not shooting at each other. Uh, the only time it gets super exciting is if you're doing it in low sec or null sec, and being shot at in an industrial, which is um, generally not where you want to be anyways. Not not the low sec part, but the being shot at in the industrial part. Um, what planetary interactions do is uh, give you a passive source of income because you can set it up and then pay attention to it maybe once a day. Uh, hang on a second. Sorry, Galentris was talking in the background. Um, once you set up a plan... <laughs> Sorry. Okay. So, what you can do is you build things that uh, are used for a wide variety of things in EVE. You can build construction blocks that get used for pretty much every T2 ship in the game. You can build fuel blocks, which po uh, fuel all of those posses. Um, you can build uh, nanite paste with PI materials. Um, what I'm going to focus on today is uh, one of the items that you will need in the near future for citadels. 
I recently got the list of the materials for citadels and I uh, have started regearing my planets accordingly. So the first thing you'll need is the website that I've linked in both chat and Twitch, which is eveplanets.com. This is your go-to for absolutely everything with P having to do with PI in EVE. It shows you what planets do what, what resources you need to do, what, what uh, building plans, uh, everything you ever wanted to know about what does what as far as planets go. It will not show you how to set anything up. It won't show you market information, but it will show you what you need to figure out what planet you want to use and what you want to do with it. So one of the things that's going to be used in um, citadels are nanofactories. So we've got a schema here. And nanofactories are a tier 4 item. So we're going to go down to tier 4 and choose nanofactories. And tier 4 items uh, go for the most ISK, but they are highly complex. So you need a bunch of things for them. And it breaks it out into a little chain here. So you need industrial explosives, Yukami superconductors, and reactive metals. Uh, the industrial explosives and Yukami superconductors are tier 3. Uh, the reactive metals are actually uh, tier 1 materials. Um, for the Yukami su superconductors, one of the things uh, available, or one of the things you need is uh, superconductors, which use plasmoids, which use suspended plasma. So we are going to set up a suspended plasma planet. Okay, so here you can see just the plasmoids, which is the tier 1 item made from suspended plasma, which is the raw material. And then on the left, where it has the whole list of base materials, suspended plasmas at the bottom. And, and this list will show you what different base materials are need for, needed for whatever schema you're with. So you can see here that suspended plasma pl needs a storm, lava, or plasma planet. So we're going to look at a storm planet here. If you look at each individual planet, it will show you what you can do on each planet. So storm planets are pretty useful. Um, they do four common things and one rare thing. Suspended plasma is the rare thing. Uh, the more common materials you can get, like aqueous liquids is a very common material. You can get it on almost any planet. I think you can't get it on lava. Uh, but suspended plasma, you can only get on the three planets, so it's a fairly rare one. Um. So what you want to do then is figure out in your area what type of planets there are available. Uh, I am currently in Vivineer, which is in Placid. So I've pulled up the orbital bodies list under the solar system information. And there is a storm planet here in Vivineer. So the first thing I'm going to do is take, there's more than one storm planet, so I'm going to take a look at a couple different storm planets here. So what I did was right click on it and go to view in planet mode. And I already have something building on this storm planet, so I cannot build my suspended plasma here. 
Did I already use both in the- no, I do not have anything on this other planet though. So now I'm going to see how much suspended plasma is on this planet. So when I pull up this screen, it's got a slider bar at the top here. So what this slider bar does is controls how much, let, lets you see how much of what is where on the planet. There are many different schools of thought on how narrow or wide you want your bar. I tend to keep mine fairly narrow. So as you can see, you know, I, I don't have this all the way over to the left, but there's still a good amount of suspended plasma on this planet. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to narrow it down to see how much and where the concentrations are. So it looks like there's one real good spot right here. But before I build on this planet, I want to check around and see if maybe there's something on another planet nearby that's better. So now that I have my bar set where it's only showing a little bit of white on this one, I'm going to look at some other storm planets. And as you can see, there are no more storm planets in Vivineer. However, if you go to Adjacent Systems and uh, ALG, and then orbital bodies. Here's another storm planet. So I'm going to view this one in planet mode as all. Well. Scan. And select suspended plasma. And this planet at the same range as the one I just looked at is barely showing any at all. I have to nudge it over a bit to show any. So, the one in Vivineer is better than the one in ALG. So now that I've decided which planet I'm going to be using, it's time for me to buy my uh, Planetary Command Center. So planetary Command Centers can be sold by players. Uh, usually they're not, or if they are, they're, it's because they're in a place where there aren't any on the market from the NPCs and they're at a greatly incre increased amount. Uh, here there's actually one in UPH that's like one tenth of an isk lower than the that, but that's not worth going the five jumps to go get it. Okay, but if you scroll down to the bottom you can see there's one in Oroville that is uh, 20,000 more than the um, than the NPC amount. And how you can tell whether it's an NPC or a PC is you look at where it says expires in. If that number is greater than 90 days, and it'll usually be greater than 300 days, that's an NPC. If it's 90 days or less, that is a PC uh, order. So you want to make real sure that one uh, it's not more expensive than the NPC is selling it for, and then two, it's not a trap. So if it's like one jump into low sec for something you would routinely get in high sec, um, chances are it's a gate camp. But we are going to buy the Storm Command Center that's right here in this station. And now you can see it in my inventory. And I'm going to click on it. As you can see, this is 1000M3, which means there are very few warships that are going to successfully carry this. F generally, you will want a bestow, or not a bestow, a uh, industrial ship. If you are operating in low sec with these, I would strongly suggest getting a nearest and then fitting it out with warp core stabs and inertial stabilizers so that people don't catch you. 
you do have to be in space to place the command center and you do have to be in the system but you do not have to be at the planet so if you want to place one in a slightly risky uh, system you can sit on the undock ready to dock up if something happens and place it and then dock back up and finish everything else I'm going to show you. Uh, here in Vivineer I am feeling fairly secure. My The tune I am on is not at war so uh, I will be in space for the rest of this so now I'm going to take this and drop it into my cargo hold and the ship I am in currently is a Bestower, which is a T1 Amar um, industrial ship. And I'm going to undock. So now I have a tab here. on my overview where I keep basically whatever I don't wh whatever I only need for industry or whatever I need uh, for my pod saver and right now I have it set up to show me planets and custom offices I'm gonna stop the motion of my ship so that if something goes wrong I can just stock right back up And I'm going to make sure that my dock is selected. Not because I think anything's going to go wrong, but just because I'm paranoid. Okay, I'm not sure how my people and places got mixed in there. Okay, so now I'm going back to find my storm planet again. So it was the second storm planet in the system, which was planet four. So I'm going back to view in planet mode. And before I do anything else, I'm going to save this to my locations so that later I can remember where I have this planet. Uh, now how you save your locations is entirely a personal choice. How I save mine is I'll put the planet name and number, what type of planet it is, and what I'm producing on it. And then I will also save the custom office uh, with CO for custom office, the planet name, and the final product. Uh, this lets me very quickly, when I'm pulling stuff off my planets, know exactly where I need to go and what I need to get when I get there. At this point, I don't need the planet list open because I am here. So I've named it uh, Planet 4 Storm Plasmoids because plasmoids is the product I will be removing from this planet. I'm finding my suspended plasma concentrations again. Okay, and here is my suspended plasma concentrations. Now I'm going to build, and the only thing I can build at this point is a command center. You cannot build anything on a planet until the command center is in place. And I'm going to plop that down right there. Then I'm going to click on it and upgrade it to the maximum this character can do. And this is my main PI alt, so she can go all the way to level 6. Uh, at the end of this, I will talk about training levels, so I'll come back to that. Now you see here it costs ISK to place these, so it's 6 million ISK. 
Oh, I missed a step here, however. Before you hit upgrade, before you hit submit on placing your planet, always check your custom office tax rate. And you do that by going to custom offices in the overview that you've set up for this. Right clicking on it and go um, access custom office. Now here, this custom office has a tax rate of 8% for the corporation I am in. This is an absolutely excellent tax rate for HiSec. So this is definitely a planet I want. So I hit submit. The upgrade didn't take. Hit upgrade and, and then submit again. Okay, and the first thing you're gonna wanna place once you have your command center in place is your storage facility and spaceport. Some people only use spaceports. I don't um I don't really like only having the spaceports. Um it, it's just more convenient for me the way I do it, but there is no simple right or wrong answer to that. Okay, so Hawk's asking me, so would I only be doing plasmoids on this planet? I am only going to be doing plasmoids on this planet. You can do multiple items on the same planet up to the limit of your command center. I have generally found it to be more economical uh, to have different planets for each base material because the concentrations are not going to be evenly distributed. So if I, need, if I needed, say, both plasmoids and oxygen on the same planet. If I need two different, oh well, here, uh, not oxygen. So say I needed plasmoids and ionic solutions on this planet. I have a decent amount of plasmoids, but I have very, very little ionic solutions. So if whatever I was producing needed both of those in fairly equal amounts, I would not get those in anything remotely approaching equal amounts. So it makes more sense for me to only do one thing per planet. Uh, and Zafika asks, can you upgrade the command center later or does it have to be done when it is placed? You can upgrade it at any time. However, what level your command center is at determines how much stuff you can have on the planet. So I generally upgrade it to the maximum that I can do uh, as soon as I place it. If you are still training the skill, go ahead and place it and upgrade it to whatever level you can. And then just remember as you level uh, up that skill uh, to come back and continue to upgrade it because um, that command center is going to determine how much you can actually get off of your planet. Okay, so now I'm going to build my storage facility. I'm going to put it here. I want it to be fairly close to in between the two sectors, but closer at the moment to the sector I'm going to focus on. Um, where your stuff is determines how long your planetary links are. Your planetary links use up command center resources. So your command center resources are CPU and power. And when you use up all of those resources, you can't build anything more. So the less you can strain those resources, the better your outcome is going to be. So then I'm going to put some processors. Since I'm only doing plasmoids on this planet, I only need basic processors. Uh, I will show you another planet at the end of this where I am taking two separate things and combining them. And I have an advanced, but I'll, I'll do that at the end. So for now, I just need some basic facilities. And I want to get these as close to my storage facility as possible to minimize those links. I'm going to start off with about three of those. Okay. 
and I also need a spaceport in order to get my planetary materials up to the custom house later. And then I'm going to need my extractor controls. I'm going to put two of them down. How many you have is based on how much stuff you have coming in and going out. Um, this is going to be something on each planet you just kind of need to get the feel of. Uh, how, how many extractors you need for the incoming and how many, um, any, how many processors you need for, for what the extractors are pulling. So that, that's just a balance you, you work with over time. And that balance does shift uh, because resources will get overutilized. Like, the reason I'm putting this where there's two separate concentrations is because I know at some point the resource I am on is going to get overutilized and I'll want to switch over to the other one. So now I'm going to put down two extractor control units. And if you saw as I moved them over, there was a shadow that showed where they can reach. Uh, that shadow determines where you can put your arms, which I'll show you in a minute. And now I need the planetary links to link this all together. Everything links to your storage facility, or if you are not using a storage facility to your uh, spaceport. Uh, nothing has to link to the command center. And nothing like the extractor heads don't need to link directly to the processors so uh, all you do now is just connect everything up to the storage facility Okay, and once I'm sure I have everything the way I want it, I hit Submit. Now, when you put a extractor control unit out, you have to submit before you can put out your extractor heads. It won't work the other way around, it will just give you an error message. So now I'm going to go to my first extractor control head and go into survey mode, which is the button on the far left here. And this surveys for deposits, and then I need to select which type of deposit I'm looking for. So I select suspended plasma, and it brings up the same concentrations we showed before. Uh, if you need to, at this point, adjust it, you can just go back to scan. And adjust the uh, sliding bar to wherever you need it to see what you want to see. So here's my next decision point which is uh, how long I want to run this to run how, I general because you can set this to run if you just leave it to default it'll run one hour and then it will quit extracting and it won't do anything else until you tell it what to do next but if you make it too long um, you extract less because the extractor heads are so big and because it declines over time I usually put it at three days and change it every one to two. So that's what I'm going to do here. So I set my time for three days and now I'm going to activate my extractor heads. And this popped up a bunch of little uh, circles and now I place them and see how right now it's showing a bunch of red down here um that is because um they're overlapping and if they're overlapping they're screwing with each other so they don't pull as much uh, also obviously they don't land exactly where i want them to begin with so now i'm going to move them into the white section there which is the strongest concentration and to where they're not overlapping And just so, 
In case you didn't see the range earlier, I can show you the range here. So you can see exactly where this thing can reach. Okay, so I'm pretty happy where this one is, and it's pulling a lot of material, which is really nice. Anything over 100 for a high-sec planet is, is a lot of material for a high-sec planet. So now I'm going to hit Install Program. Now, once I hit Submit, those heads will start extracting, but I haven't yet told them where to put the stuff once they extract it. And if it doesn't have a route, it doesn't have any storage space, the stuff gets wasted. So now I'm going to set a route. So I click back in here and click the second thing there, which is products. And it shows suspended plasma, not routed. So I'm going to click on that and then click create route. And then I want this to go to my storage unit. So I will click on my storage unit and hit create route and that one is all set. Now I'm going to do now given how much it's pulling, I'm actually going to before I do my second extractor head, I'm going to put one more processing facility down because I don't think I have quite enough processing to deal with the end product. And the reason I want to do this before I set my ex second extractor head is because if I uh, wait until I set the second one, uh, I won't have enough CPU or power to add the other uh, facility. Now, if you get set up and then once it's running, you discover that um, you either need more facilities or less, you can delete and add. It does cost ISK to do so, but it's less ISK than the production you're going to lose by not fixing it if you have a problem. Uh, Nemo, for, t for Tier 3 PI production, um, okay, I, I will get into those questions at the end. Because obviously this stuff is going for T3 production eventually. Uh, and actually T4, but um, I want to go through the basics of setting a planet. So this is the same thing again. Set for three days. And see, when I tried to hit the six extractor head, it tells me I cannot put another one. Let me bring that... Uh, message back up. Cannot construct uh, construct another one because it would overload my command center's power core, which means the CPU is fine, but it doesn't have enough core. It's basically the same as as your spaceships, uh, except here it simply won't let you do it, rather than letting you leave something offline. Okay, so the second extractor head set up and routing to the same place. Now if I come back in three days and this, this first deposit is waning but still good and the second deposit's really strong, what I'll do is I'll take the uh, one of the extractor heads and swap it over and put it over on this other section so that I maintain my production. Uh, but I want to get a few feel over a few days um, how the planet ebbs and flows. 
So now I'm going to set up all this material that I've routed to my storage facility so that it goes to the different processors and starts making my things. Now, unlike the extractor heads, for a processing center, you don't have to submit after you build it before it will let you do stuff. So I'm going to click on these and it says basic industry facility new, uh, producing nothing, no schematic selected. So the first thing I'm going to do is select a schematic. So when you click on that, it brings down the list of all of the things you could build with the materials you could get on this planet. And the one I want is plasmoids, so I'm going to select that. Now if you look here, it says output 20 plasmoids, input 3,000 suspended plasma. That means for every 3,000 units the extractor pulls, it will produce 20 plasmoids. That, uh, that's a sliding scale that will continue to go up as you go to the different levels. Uh, I have that written down somewhere and I'll go over it at the end. Uh, but just know for each tier you get diminishing numbers. So I hit install and it tells me that my plasmoids aren't routed. So I'm going to route them to the storage facility. Now my plasmoids will go here but so far the uh, the raw material isn't going there so I need to go to routing on my storage facility. And see it has 20 plasmoids going in and it's got all these plasmoids coming in but it has nothing going out. Now you can select either of the piles of incoming. It doesn't matter. Uh, it will just pull from whatever is available in the storage unit regardless of which one you select. I'm going to select one of these and do create route. And route it to that facility. Now, say I forgot that I hadn't set up a schematic and tried to route something to a facility that I haven't set up yet. It will come back with this message. Uh, Storm basic industry facility invalid, commodity not an ingredient in current schematic. And if you hit create route, it gives you one of Eve's um, silly messages. Uh, that basically tells you you're doing something silly. So I'm going to close out of that and finish setting these up. Uh, Hawk, it, it depends on what you're pulling and how much you're pulling in. Um, Yeah, that, that that that's a balance you, you just um you just figure out w what works for for the way you're producing things. I don't think there is a better or worse on that one. Okay, so I set the schematics in the other three processors. And now I'm going to send the suspended plasma out to all of them. At this point, since I already have one going out, I need to make sure that I select the incoming, not the outgoing. And then I'll hit submit. And then I always go and check just to make sure I haven't screwed something up to make sure everything's routed the way it's supposed to. Just because if you accidentally miss something and you wait a day, uh, you've lost whatever it was that day's worth of production.
Okay, so that's the basics on how I set up a tier one planet. I'm gonna go ahead and close this planet for now. And I'm gonna show you on one of my other tier one planets how I pull things off. So I've got electrolytes and water in the system because I'm producing coolant on this character right now. Uh, now, ele electrolytes produce at a lower rate than water does. So what I've done to balance this is I, on the electrolyte planet, I only produce the electrolytes. On the water planet, I both produced the water and bring the electrolytes over to, um, as the input for the coolant and build the coolant on the water planet. So now I'm going to warp to my custom office bookmark and view my electrolyte planet. And I already pulled off of this today, so there's not very much, but there's enough that I can show you. So I'm gonna go to my storage facility and my electrolytes, my finished product are sitting there. So I'm gonna choose expedited transfer. And I'm gonna drop that stuff onto my launch pad and execute. Now, I, now I'm gonna go to my launch pad. Now you can launch the stuff just into orbit I don't tend to do this because I'm usually moving a great deal of material and you can't put stuff back down on the planet that way anyways. So I'm going to tell it launch and drop it in the customs office and as you can see I get charged the tax rate on this one it's 10% and choose transfer. and. It took me too long, so I drifted out of range. You have to be within 2,500 of the planetary of the custom office in order to uh, remove your thing from the planet. So I'm turning around and trundling my way back to the custom office. And this is the downside of using industrial ships for this because they are not the fastest things ever. And then this particular tune only has PI and mining skills, so she can't even use a micro warp drive. Yeah, trundling my way. And there. So now I'm going to go over to my water planet. Now my water planet here is hopping. So you can see in here I have aqueous liquids, which is what the what's being pulled in. I have the coolant that's been made since I pulled this morning. I've already put electrolytes down there and I have water down there. I'm going to transfer my coolant, my finished product, up. Wait until my warp ends. And then as soon as my warp ends, uh, do the transfer right away so that my ship doesn't have time to drift off. And then I'm going to drop this back down onto the planet. Now, if I didn't have a bunch of electrolytes already there, uh, I'd go ahead and move it into the storage unit. But that storage unit is very close to full, so I want to leave it alone for right now. Oh, but there was something else I wanted to show you here. So, coolant is a tier 2 item. So I have it, two advanced facilities here, as well as my um, basics. And you see the schematic here. Um,
for coolant, uh, it takes 40 of each of the two tier 1 materials and outputs 5 of the tier 2 material. So, and I looked up earlier, if you're going from tier 2 material to tier 3 material, uh, the input is 10 tier 2 and output is uh, 3 of the tier 3. For, but remember that's 10 of each of the two tier 2 materials. Uh, so, so it would be 20 makes uh, 3. Uh, tier 3 materials is a... Uh, or no, tier 3 to tier 4 materials is um, 6 to 1. There are some tier 4 materials that also require tier 2 materials. Uh, and if it requires a tier 2 material, it will require 40 of that tier 2 material. Okay, so... That is the basics of this. Um, if people want to swap back over and unmute their mumble for questions, or if you want to type questions into the lecture chat, or I'll open up the Twitch chat so I can see it. Oh well. Uh, yes, I will be saving this video. Um, how much ISK for the initial investment? To set up five planets, I usually budget about 50 million ISK. Yeah, so it's about 10 million isk per planet uh, to set up. Uh, the other cool thing with PI material, while well, I'm waiting for the Twitch to catch up with, with um, this, is um, you can reset this basically anywhere in normal space, as long as you're doing it in normal space. So... Um, like, I will sit on a bomber's fire fleet, and while I'm waiting for a drop, check my PI. Uh, the one thing you can't do is if it's in a wormhole, you can't do it from anywhere but inside that wormhole. And if you are in a wormhole, you can't access your PI offices that are not in that wormhole, that are back in normal space. Um, Cameron... It's hard for me to calculate what my current monthly income is uh, because what I am producing at the moment is fuel blocks, which uh, is both PI materials and ice materials. And um, I am producing those along with my husband over a combined total of eight PI tunes. Uh, with those eight PI tunes, we can produce enough fuel blocks for for about I think I think we get about ten billion isk a month. Yeah, maybe. May Eight to ten billion. It's gone down recently because they added a um, a new ice material. They uh, the strontium clusters to the fuel blocks, which greatly impacts that. Uh, yes, it does matter uh, how who else is doing it. If multiple people are pulling the same thing from the same cluster, uh, it will reduce your output. Um, usually I just try to be in areas where there's not a lot of people. You can look around on the planet and find how many command centers are there, and if any of them are close to you, but your command center isn't necessarily right where your production is, so it's an imprecise science. Um, oh. 
or you can do that. Okay, well, once you have that set, you can go find it. Let me see if anyone else has something on this planet. So yeah, I, you can you can go hunting and and try to find other people's, but it's really kind of hard to find. Oh, set scan to all white. Oh, I've never done that before. Okay, it's also possible there's not anyone on this planet, because I am in a backwater. But yes, you, you can locate other players' stuff. And if you're doing it in a high, in a place where there's a lot of people, uh, I would worry more about it. If you happen to be in a place where you know almost nobody goes and almost nobody does very much, um, you probably don't need to worry about it all that much. So I'm just reading through the Twitch uh, chat to see if I've missed any questions. Uh, yes, the rate your uh, someone asked is the rate your extractors change uh, based on how many days you choose that they take. Uh, if you have them take a long time, they're going to pull in a lot less. So it's a, um, I think it's a balancing act between how much, on one hand, how much of your game time do you want to spend messing around with the planet? On the other hand, how much risk do you want to make? The more time you spend messing with it, it and the more frequently you refresh, uh, the, m the more you're going to pull off the planet. Um, for newbies producing on their first planet, I would recommend that you go to a trade hub and look at the tier 2 materials and see which one is uh, going at a rate that you're happy with. Uh, one of the um, stronger selling things. Uh, don't just look at what it's selling for right then though. Uh, look at what it's selling for over time. So, it's not going to, it'll only show me what's in Placid here, which isn't going to be a very good example, but. So go to um, Refined Planetary Materials, and you can see all of these different planetary materials. I'm going to choose Construction Blocks. And then price history. And you can see how that price is trending over time. So you know, if it's some if it was something that had a very large recent spike, but in general has been much lower, that might not be what you want to do for your first one. Uh, if it's pretty steady over time and it's a good price, uh, then then you'll pull up that website again and um, check and see what you need to do it. Uh, make sure that you have the right number of planets to successfully pull it off and go for it. Um, as Hawk said, coolant is good, robotics is good, uh, construction blocks uh, are really solid because people never quit needing T2 ships. Nanites are generally good but 
tend to be a little more volatile. Um, and nanites are one I think is going to go up a bit because uh, they're already fairly heavily utilized for nanite paste as well as being something that's going to be used in the new Citadel stuff. Uh, I strongly suggest you check out things on the test server on the new Citadels uh, because uh, right now there is not enough PI material on the market for the Citadels that are going to be coming out. So if you want to take a little bit longer view and start stocking up now uh, for when Citadels drop, you can probably make a great deal of ESC. Can you consume all the resources from a planet? No. The planet will always continually regenerate the resources. Can you have a constant rate of pulling on a single resource that uh, makes what you pull very, very low? Yes. Uh, but I don't believe it's possible to actually consume all the resources because it does regenerate. Um. I don't believe there's a way to automize the goods uh, to a orbital hangar. I really wish there was. That would be nice. Uh, but it doesn't provide a mechanic for that. Okay, I'm not seeing any new questions in the Twitch chat or in the lecture hall. I'm going to give you guys another minute if you want to ask more questions. Yes, buy orders are your friends, but that is market PvP, and um, I am probably not the best instructor for market PvP. I don't have the patience for it. Okay, so I have access to a list for citadels because somebody went onto the test server and produced one. If you want to talk to me privately uh, after the class, we can talk about that. But I do not know of a uh, publicly available source for that information at the moment that doesn't involve going and doing the work. That said, I strongly suspect there will be a public one very soon. That type of thing doesn't um, doesn't keep quiet very long. Uh, the other thing that I can tell you will be needed for Citadels uh, is Citadels will need fuel blocks to run just the same as POSs. So continuing to uh, produce fuel blocks and holding on to them, if you have the capital to do so, uh, cannot hurt. And as I already said in here, nanite fac uh, factories or nano factories are going to be one of the things on that list. I'm not sure if the null blocks are gonna uh, release them or use them. I do know that someone with a great deal more knowledge on that than I do uh, at one point calculated that uh, as of a month ago there was not sufficient PI on the market at that moment to produce an entire extra large citadel. Okay, um, yeah, I'm gonna wait one more minute for questions, and then if no one has any other questions, I'm going to go ahead and close this out, and hopefully go blow something up.
Toxic Ender, go troll someone else's class. Or wait until I release the cord uh, recording. Okay, I'm going to dock back up and close out the recording. The stream is recorded and it will be put up on uh, the e university um, message boards as soon, video and all, uh, as soon as I figure out how to transfer it to video. Okay, and I am ending the stream here. Thank you for all, all for coming.